thank Ravi for the introduction. So as Ravi said, I'm Matthew Markham from Element 6. For those of you not familiar with Element 6, we are a materials manufacturing company based in the UK, but with manufacturing sites in the US, Ireland, Germany, South Africa and China. We manufacture diamond for a range of different solutions. Well, most people think of diamond, they think of the abrasive applications, uh, which is a lot of what we do. However, we also make products for te technological solutions too. For example, diamond has the highest thermal conductivity and used as a heat spreader for thermal management. But today we're here to talk about optimising diamond for quantum technologies. So this is the outline of my talk today. I will start with introducing diamond quantum technologies and the nitrogen vacancy defect. I will then talk about some of the different applications of diamond quantum technologies. I'll then go on to discuss how we grow diamond using chemical vapour deposition. I will show you some of the high nitrogen uh, diamond material we've been developing uh, and finish off by showing you some of the different types of material we manufacture to cover the range of different applications that can be accessed by diamond quantum technologies. Diamond is an ideal material for quantum technologies as it acts as a low noise environment for spins associated with defects in the diamond. The reason for this can be traced back to diamond strong bonds and symmetry, which means phonons interact weakly with electronic spins in the diamond such that spin lifetimes can be milliseconds even at room temperature. The most common defect that is used as a qubit in diamond is the negative charge state of the MV defect, which consists of a nitrogen atom next to a gap in the lattice. What is interesting about the MV defect is its energy level system. For example, if an electron starts in the ms equals zero ground state and is excited by a green photon, it relaxes emitting a red photon back to the same ground state. However, if an electron is in the ms equals plus or minus one state, and is excited, it preferentially moves back to the ground state via singlet level into the ms equals zero state. Going around this loop a few times then will spin polarize a whole population of MV defects. The defect can then be controlled by simple application of microwaves and read out by monitoring the amount of luminescence. We can see this in this graph where we get a dip when the microwaves are on resonance between the transitions. Applying a magnetic field splits the plus minus one transition, which can then be used to measure a magnetic field. What is nice about doing these measurements is that the basic setup for any such measurement in practice can be very simple with a light source, diamond, microwave source and a detector. The simple setup and room temperature operation give great potential for making devices with small size, weight and power requirements. This list shows you the potential applications that can be made possible by diamond quantum technologies. They are all at different technology readiness levels, but the most advanced is magnetic field sensing. The diamond requirements depend on the application, but also on the device architecture. So if I take magnetometry as an example, I did add like the longest spin coherence time, or T2 star, which should lead us to reducing the nitrogen and carbon-13 content in the material as shown in the graph. However, we then need to find ways to illuminate all the MV defects in the diamond, along with applying uniform magnetic field and microwave pulses, which can introduce engineering challenges. One way to solve, for example, the illumination challenge is to, is to use a light trapping diamond waveguide to bounce the light around. However, using this obviously introduces other challenges, for example, a small deviation of light injected uh, caused, say, by a vibration will significantly change the light path. As such, single pass techniques may also be better for some applications and therefore will benefit from high nitrogen and MV content. We grow our diamond using a process called microwave assisted chemical vapor deposition. We have a vacuum chamber that is a resonant cavity into which we inject gases and microwaves to create a plasma. The two main gases we add are hydrogen and a carbon containing gas such as methane. But MV based applications we also add nitrogen dopant gas. It is the hydrogen that really plays a key role in this process. In the cartoon video we can see the hydrogen, which is the white balls, breaking up some of the uh, methane in the plasma to form methyl radicals which act as the growth species. They also create the growth sites on the surface as well as terminating the whole surface stopping it reconstructing into graphite. In the video in the bottom right we can see a time-lapse 
in video of a CBD diamond growing. So by carefully controlling the gases, the microwave power, the pressure and the temperature, we can control how the diamond grows. And by selecting the right conditions, we're able to control the quality of the diamonds. So we need to consider all these factors for diamond uh, in quantum technologies. There are three main things to consider uh, when we are trying to optimize material for a quantum device. There is T2 star that's been lifetime with the MV defect. There's the geometry of the diamond. So how are we going to get the green light in or the red light out of the diamond in an optimized way? As well as the MV contrast emission. That is the amount of light you're getting from your MV of interest versus any other background light. As a material grower, we need to think about the various different things that can influence these key factors. For example, dislocations in part strain, which can affect T2 star. Or the amount of N can also limit T2 star. This is what we see in this plot where T2 star is plotted for different nitrogen concentrations. So depending on your application and architecture will depend on where you want to position yourself in this graph. We've been recently working at producing material in the sort of 10 to 20 parts per million range uh, for an application with Lockheed Martin for alternative GPS systems. So now I'm going to talk about how we've gone about optimizing this 16 parts per million nitrogen material. Typically when you add nitrogen to the CVD process it introduces other defects that results in broadband absorption features giving rise to material that looks brown in color. These additional defects can limit the spin coherence time. We therefore looked at a range of different synthesis conditions, growing thin layers of material so we could rapidly feed back on the synthesis process. And we were able to show that we could reduce the concentration of these parasitic defects while actually increasing the nitrogen concentration. You can see this clearly in the colour and the samples of this series of diamonds. So what we then did was take three different recipes and looked at those in more detail by growing multiple samples to greater than 600 microns. We then started the characterization by measuring the neutral and positive charge state of the nitrogen through absorption spectroscopy. What we found was we were able to increase the neutral to total nitrogen charge ratio to greater than 80% with the positive charge state of the nitrogen being a good indicator of having other charges in the system and therefore something we want to minimize. We then selected recipe 2 as recipe 3 uh, had too much nitrogen and then grew a batch of material which we can then characterize and showed that we had good con batch control of the nitrogen. We then looked at increasing the MV content of the material. This can be done by electron irradiation which creates vacancies in the material. Subsequent annealing then forms the MV defect from the nitrogen in the material. First we mapped out the dose by applying a range of different irradiation doses. We then picked the optimum dose, which we then repeated uh, that process over a 12 month period, showing a consistent vacancy generation process with less than 4% variation. We can then apply this dose to our material. So here we have a batch of 23 samples, all of which had 16 ppm of nitrogen in, which has then been irradiated and subsequently annealed to form the MV. Here we show that there is less than 4% variation across this batch. Another important consideration is strain, as any strain in the material can change the resonant frequency between the states such that one MV defect will have a very different frequency to another and as a result the average line width is broadened. An easy way to analyse uh, this is to measure the biorefringence of the material. The plots on the left here show six different samples with the biorefringence around 10 to the minus 6 which is pretty good uh, for an optical quality material. You can do more accurate measurements where you map the line position across the samples as described in the reference there. This shows that line position varies less than a kilohertz across uh, an entire sample. So if you take these results, the combined material, the radiation and annealing, it produces material with a controlled MV concentration and charge balance. So when we measure the quantum properties of the material, we get a T2 star greater than one microsecond, which is consistent with this material having a low concentration of parasitic defects. So on the graphs I showed earlier, we were at the limit of what we'd expect for T2 star for this particular nitrogen and carbon-13 concentration. And the resultant material, as you can see, is this nice uh, purple colour. 
So that is a case study of our 16 ppm material we've been developing. This material is suitable for applications such as magnetometry, but as I described earlier, there are lots of different diamond-based quantum technologies. So therefore, we're working with commercial and academic partners to develop a few different grades to meet those needs, and have recently just launched a new material, the first in a new range of materials called the DMV series. Our new DMV B1 material is designed as a generic material for applications such as magnetometry and RF sensing. Other materials I'll highlight is electronic grade diamond. This has been around for many years now, but has been useful as a base material for fundamental MV research, as well as being useful for diamond-based quantum commu computing and quantum communication, some of which I think Jason will talk about later. The reason for this is it has a very low NV concentration such that you can image single NV defects. Moving back to magnetometry, there is another modality in how you can use diamond as a uh, magnetometer, which is called wide field imaging. In this process, what's required is a thin layer of NV, typically a few microns thick, on top of a low NV substrate such as our electronic grade diamond. This allows magnetic fields to be imaged with micron spatial resolution and a high sensitivity where the resolution is determined somewhat by the thickness of the uh, MV layer that you use. Uh, this has been used already uh, in many imaging examples such as measuring the action potential in neurons and also measuring uh, interesting geological specimens. The last material I mention is our high purity quantum grade material, again something that we've been working with academia for a long time now. This has a similar purity to electronic grade diamond but is carbon 12 enriched, so has much longer spin coherence times. So now I'll just give you a brief summary. So CV diamond, I've hopefully shown is a very useful and powerful material uh, for quantum technologies because it's got a long decoherence time. You get room top of temperature operation and it's, it's quite easy to use with optical initialization and readouts. I've hopefully also shown you a flavor of some of the different materials we've made with a case study on the 16 ppm material um, that allows a range of different diamond based quantum technologies from quantum commuting and magnetic sensing. I've also shown that we've now launched our first new grade of uh, material, DMV B1. That just leaves me to thank you for listening um, and also thanks to the funding agencies that have funded this work over many years as well as thanking the partners that we work with that help develop and push out this new diamond-based quantum technologies.